Hello guys, this is Sayyid Muhammad Wakas. I am back with another video. The topic which I am going to discuss today is related to the hot water recirculation system. And uh, this topic is very important. So please make sure to watch the video all the way till end. And don't forget to subscribe my channel. So let's start hot water recirculation system design. So as you can see that there I have prepared an excel sheet and I have uh, taken an example of uh, 24 story building and uh, we're gonna design the hot water recirculation system for that 24 story building so here I have a table also which I'm gonna use so first thing you have to do here is you have to write your risers all the risers in here which you have uh, shown here in the figure so as you can see that I have uh, given the name for each riser like riser 1, 2, 4, 3 and up till 11 and uh, hot water piping is already shown here in the drawing as you can see that so if you if I will zoom and you guys can see this is our water heater installed in the basement and this is the hot water supply piping this is the hot water uh, supply piping from here and if you see that this is going all the way up up till 24 story and then there's a recirculation piping hot water recirculation piping and this recirculation is going back into the heater so we are going to design this recirculation lines so we are going to design the risers and we're going to design the main for recirculation system and uh, hot water piping uh, is sizes are already mentioned in here so if you remember that i have made uh, a video on domestic hot water pipe sizing so if you don't know how to do this hot water pipe sizing you can go back to my channel and you can watch the video about domestic hot water pipe sizing so i have to write all the risers in here and, and main also this is the risers and this is the main from risers to one riser to another riser that means this is the horizontal pipe you can see that this is the horizontal pipe for recirculation this one so first you have to do is you have to write the hot water pipe sizes here and the second thing you have here is hot water piping BTUs lost per hour per unit length so this is you have to write in here then you have to write the length and then hot water piping uh, BTUs uh, loss per hour based on this length and then you have to calculate this hot water recirculation piping BTUs per hour and uh, in the end you have to calculate this GPM to overcome the heat losses so first of all I'm gonna take uh, uh, main from header to the from heater to the riser one so as you can see that this is the heater which we have in here and this is the uh, hot water supply piping you can see in here this and size of this uh, pipe is 4 inches hot water supply pipe and uh, sizes for recirculation pipes are unknown so we are going to calculate so this hot water supply pipe size you can see that it's 4 inches up till this point and this point is riser 1 and then again you go over here and you will see the size is same 4 inches 4 inches 4 inches you can see here so from this point point 3 riser 3 size is changed to 3 inches then you have 3 inches up till here this point 14 riser 14 so after that your size is changed again to 2.5 inches you can see here 2.5 inches again 2.5 inches and then here you have 2 inches so uh, if you see from uh, main from heater to uh, from heater to riser 1 so heater to riser 1 we have write 4 inches in here so same way which I have told you you have to write the sizes from riser 1 to riser 2 that means from riser 1 to riser 2 there is a main pipe in here and size is 4 inches you have to write 4 inches and from let's say we take another like riser 12 to 14 how we get 3 inches so this is 12 and this is 14 in between them we have horizontal pipe the main pipe and you see that the size is 3 inches hot water pipe size is 3 inches 
so we have write the inches so in the same way you have to write the pipe sizes here one by one for the hot water and uh, hot water piping vt use uh, how do you, how you will get this one so you have to use a table for this thing so you go back here and you check the piping heat loss per linear feet for 140 degree Fahrenheit water supply temperature and uh, 70 degree Fahrenheit room temperature here if you see that we have bare pipes and insulated pipes so if you have a bare pipe without insulation you have to use these values if you have insulated pipe you have to use these column values since our pipe is insulated half inch fiberglass insulation so, this one. so first I have 4 inch pipe size so I have to write the heat loss value for 4 inch pipe size with insulation you see that it's 46 so I have to write 46 value in here so same way you have to write one by one so let's say 2 inches 2 inches is how much 28 so we have BTUs per hour so we have to write 28 in here so once this is done you have to go for the next column that is length length is very simple you just have to go to your AutoCAD plan and you have to measure the length from one point to another point so uh, as per uh, the AutoCAD plan you have to check the lengths and you have to write lengths here so I already write the lengths here so if, if you can see that lengths are already mentioned here like 20, 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 20, 20 so according to that I have write all the lengths in here so you just have to check it from the AutoCAD and write in here one by one now the next column is hot water piping total BTUs loss per hour how you will get this value now we know that the length of the pipes and we know that BTUs per hour per unit length so you just need to multiply these two figures then you will get the hot water piping total BTUs loss per hour so one by one you have to just multiply these two like hot water piping loss uh, per hour per unit length into length you will get the hot water BTUs per hour so one by one you have to calculate for all of the piping so next thing over here is the hot water recirculation this is the main thing which we are focusing on because this is the hot water recirculation system design so if you see in here hot water recirculation piping BTUs loss per hour this you have to calculate in here and how you will get this one since we don't know the recirculation uh, pipe size this is what our uh, case that we want to calculate the sizes for the recirculation system hot water recirculation system so we don't know the sizes for hot water recirculation system so there is an assumption as per IPC International Plumbing Code or ASP American Society of Plumbing Engineers but we have to do there, there's a standard that we can if we don't know the sizes we can take 2 by 3 of this value which heat loss we calculated here we can take 2 by 3 of this value 2 by 3 means uh, 0 0.67 so you just need to multiply this value with 0 0.67 and you will get the hot water recirculation piping heat losses so one by one you have to multiply with 0 0.67 so this is a standard value as I told you as per IPC so you have to calculate one by one for the hot water recirculation piping heat losses so next thing you have to calculate here is the GPM that is gallons per minute to overcome the heat losses based on 20 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference as we mentioned earlier that supply temperature from the heater is 140 degree Fahrenheit so based on our assumption of 20 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference that means hot water supply temperature is 140 and recirculation is 120 so based on 20 degree Fahrenheit we have to calculate the uh, GPM to overcome the heat losses so how you will get this one you just need to add these values that is uh, for the hot water piping plus hot water recirculation piping divided by 10,000 you will get the GPM so how did I get this 10,000 value so I will tell you also how I did how I get this one 10,000 so as we know that uh, one gallon of water weigh 8.3 lbs you can check over the internet that one gallon of water weigh is 8.3 lbs so pounds and uh, one BTU is equal to heat necessary to raise one degree Fahrenheit and uh, recirculation for one GPM since it is based on 20 degree Fahrenheit so we just need to multiply this 8.3 based on 20 degree Fahrenheit so you will get 166 BTUs per minute 
so if you want to convert into hour instead of minute you just need to multiply with 60 and you will get 9960 that is almost equal to 10,000 so this is why I have divided this value with 10,000 so one by one you have to get these values uh, uh, over here in this column uh, for this one you just need to add uh, hot water piping total BTUs plus recirculation piping BTUs divided by 10,000 you will get the GPM in here for that particular section of the pipe so that means main from riser 8 to 10 this is our riser 8 and this is 10 and this is the main in here horizontal pipe so the GPM over here is 0.13 GPM which we have right in here so this is done after that we'll go for the risers so if you see that uh, riser 1 5 7 I write it combined because the length was same that's why I write 157 together and 2414 I write together because of the length so I have write together all of these just because of the length so if you go uh, for riser 1 5 and 7 so 1 5 and 7 so you have to check their lengths from the AutoCAD plans and you have to write the lengths accordingly so riser 1 if you see that which pipe do we have in riser 1 hot water piping I'm talking about the hot water piping what we have here in riser 1 for the hot water piping so if you see that in the riser 1 we have two and a half inches two and a half inches two inches one and a half inches and one quarter so we have to write all this pipe there can see that two and a half two one and a half and one quarter so all of pipe you have to write in here accordingly and again you have to get this hot water piping BTUs per hour per unit length from the table so two and a half inch pipe how much it is 32 32 so one one quarter how much it is 21 that is 21 so this is how you have to write one by one for each pipe size so length again I am telling you you have to check from the AutoCAD plan and you have to write it so already I already write the length in here so 160 feet 27 feet 18 feet and 6 feet and for what you have to do again you have to multiply in order to get your hot water piping total BTU loss per hour you just need to multiply the length with per unit length uh, BTUs loss so you will get the total piping loss in BTUs per hour so same way you have to do for this one this one and this one so once you are done with this uh, you have to just get the total of this value total heat uh, loss for the hot water piping and uh, this one is again same assumption we have to take 2 by 3 of this value because we don't know the pipe size for recirculation system so we are going to take 2 by 3 value of this one so if you multiply this with 0.67 that is 2 by 3 of this value it is 4323 BTUs per hour for recirculation piping heat losses and this thing again you have to calculate some these two values and divide by 10,000 you will get the GPM 1.08 GPM so as you know that this is for one riser which we have calculated and here if you see that we have three risers that is 1, 5 and 7. So if we have 3 rather that means you need to multiply this value with 3 and this value with 3. So I already multiplied this with 3 and this with 3. So we got the total BTUs for hot water piping and hot water recirculation piping heat losses for 3 risers. This is for individual riser and this is for 3 risers. So same way you have to other risers 2, 4 and 14. So I'm going to take uh, one more here just to save the time I'm not going to do for all of these. So I'm going to take one more example here for riser 6. So if you see riser 6, so we will check now, check the pipe sizes in riser 6. So this is riser 6 and if we check the pipe sizes, this is one and a half. This is the hot water pipe sizing again. This is one and a half, this is one quarter, one quarter and one inch. So we have one and a half, one quarter and one inch, three pipe sizes here. So one and a half, one quarter and one inches. That's how we write the pipe sizes in the riser. 
and we will write the heat loss values for each same way you have to check these values from this table and you have to write in here and these lengths you have to get from AutoCAD plans and you have to write in here and uh, hot water piping BTUs per hour you have to get just multiply this per unit uh, BTUs per hour loss for hot water with this length you will get the total hot water uh, heat loss per hour for the hot water piping so one by one you have to calculate for all pipe sizes and then you have to sum it up in here and then what you have to do in here is uh, you just have to uh, calculate the second one that is uh, 2 by 3 of the total value 2 by 3 of the total value so you just need to uh, multiply this with 2 by 3 that is we are taking two third of this value that is 0 0.67 and you will get the heat loss for the recirculation piping hot water recirculation piping so in the same way you have to get the GPM you just need to sum up hot water piping BTUs per hour loss and recirculation hot water piping and divide by 10,000 you will get the GPM that is 0 0.80 so this is how you have to calculate the BTUs and GPM for the remaining risers so here we have four risers you can see that so you need to multiply with the four to get the total BTUs and you need to multiply with four to get the total heat loss for recirculation and hot water piping so after that what you have to do is you have to sum up your uh, heat losses for hot water piping and recirculation hot water piping so if you sum up the hot water uh, piping heat losses it's around 95,000 534 BTUs per hour and if you check for recirculation uh, losses this one is around 64,000 BTUs per hour hot water recirculation piping loss 64,000 so total recirculation rate will be how much it will be the sum of both hot water piping plus hot water recirculation piping that is 1,59,542 that means almost 1,60,000 or 160,000 BTUs per hour so how you will get the required flow rate required flow rate how you will get you just need to same way you just need to divide the sum of these two that is hot water piping heat loss plus hot water recirculation piping heat loss divide by 10,000 to get the required flow rate so required flow rate for our system is required recirculation flow rate is 15.95 GPM so 15.95 GPM is required and if you check in here the next thing is uniform friction head loss it is recommended uh, to have a uniform friction head loss of 2 to 4 feet per 100 feet so here we have taken 3 feet per 100 feet uniform friction head loss and uh, develop length of the run which we have to calculate that means uh, from heater to the most remote riser so this is our heater and most remote riser if you see that this is our most remote riser that is 11 at uh, st uh, story or floor number 11 floor number 24 we have the most remote riser that is 11 so from here recirculation piping if you check that hot water recirculation piping to the heater this is our developed length total to the most remote uh, riser that is 11 number riser so if you check from the AutoCAD plan you can get these uh, lengths and according to that you have to write your lengths so this is for the riser due to the riser 207 this is from the riser recirculation 207 and this is for the horizontal piping to the main from main to the heater so 207 is due to the riser 275 is the main piping length so total is 482 feet is the developed length so how we'll get the equivalent length of run since we don't know the sizes for recirculation so we're gonna apply the uh, general thumb rule for fittings to get the total equivalent length of run so see, we know that the total piping length for the straight piece of pipe but we don't know for the uh, fittings and the valve so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 10% of this value to get the equivalent length of run 
so you can see that this value plus 10 percent of this value so we'll get 530 feet is the total equivalent length of run so now we know that equivalent length of run and we know the friction had loss that is 3 feet per 100 feet it is recommended value 3 feet per 100 feet that's why we have used this one if you increase this value to 5 8 or 10 you will have more losses that's why we have selected 3 to have a uniform losses so if you want to calculate the head required now for recirculation system so how you will get that you just need to multiply this uniform head loss with the equivalent length which we have calculated in here divided by 100 you will get the head so head for recirculation system required is 15.91 feet that means 16 feet head is required for the recirculation system and gpm we already calculated that is 16 gpm so now the last thing which we have to do here is we have to size the hot water recirculation system this is very important so how we did this thing so basically i have to use this formula for the brass or the copper piping you have to use this equation and for galvanized or steel pipe you have to use this equation since we have a brass or piping so we have used this formula so we have the h value head we know that 16 and length it's per unit length we have calculated here so if you and q we also know that that is 16 gpm in here so if you know all the values in here so the thing which remaining is d that is diameter for piping so you can calculate easily after putting all the values so based on this thing there is a formula developed in here if you change the gpm one by one you will develop this uh, this thing that is uh, uh, half inch is equal to 1.8 gpm so from this equation i got uh, this values half inch equal to 1.8 gpm 2 inch equal to 34.6 gpm and 4 inch equal to 181 gpm so now we are going to use one by one to calculate the recirculation pipe sizes so one more thing if you have to check in here for all the risers if you see that gpm is 1.08 for 157 and 2 4 and 14 gpm is 1.02 and 1.14 1.80 1 1.04 0.92 so you can see that uh, minimum gpm here is 1.8 gpm and all the gpm which we have calculated in here for the risers are less than 1.8 gpm so the minimum size if you see that here is half inches available that means our riser will be half inches all the risers because their gpm is less than 1.8 so we can use half inch in here but we will not gonna use half inch the minimum size recommended is 3 4 inches 3 by 4 inches so instead of half inches we're gonna use risers 3 by 4 inches the reason why i'm gonna use 3 by 4 inches instead of half inches because pipe size will be very small and uh, with the time maybe deposits will be develop inside the pipe and it will gonna block the pipe so it is better to use three by four inches pipe size instead of half inches even if it is uh, 1.8 gpm so i'm gonna use minimum pipe size is three by four inches for all the risers if you see that all gpms is less than 3.5 so all the risers size for the recirculation hot water it will be for risers it will be three by four inches so riser size is done 3 by 4 inches now what we're going to do we're going to calculate the size for the main recirculation piping in here like between 9 to 11 uh, riser between 6 to 9 riser between 5 to 7 between 1 to 2 we have to calculate the main horizontal piping so we'll do one by one so first is riser 11 so it we'll start from the most remote one if you see that this is riser 11 in here and uh, we're gonna get the size for this uh, main pipe main recirculation pipe in here which is connected to uh, water heater in here so we'll go one by one and calculate one by one size to the water heater recirculation pipe sizes so here you have section 11 this is uh, riser 11 and we are going to get the size for this horizontal pipe in here this one so this is uh, we have uh, 11 if you see here this is riser 11 plus main 9 to 11 
first we calculate the GPM and based on GPM we will get the sizes. So between 9 to 11 if you see that how much is the GPM we got from main from riser 9 to 11. This one if you see the GPM is 0.12 between 9 to 11 between 9 and 11 riser and 11 riser is how much GPM riser 11 this one remember that 0.12 and riser 11 is 0.92 so 0.92 and 0.12 so 0.92 plus 0.12 is 1.09 gpm total so if you see that 1.09 gpm based on the assumption and based on the uh, values applied to this formula we got this thing so 1.09 uh, so 1.09 is less than 3.5 GPM so we can use 3 by 4 inch pipe size in here so we're gonna use 3 by 4 inch pipe size for this one so that means we can use 3 by 4 inch pipe size up till 3.5 GPM if we have 3.6 GPM then we have to increase the pipe size to 1 inches so I'm gonna take another example in here so let's take second one also 1.04 so 0.92 plus 0.12 it is 1.04 sorry so let's take the second main pipe size so now we will calculate the size for the second one here second one so if you see the second one is uh, riser is 9 we have to add this value also which we calculated earlier this value first value which we have calculated here plus riser 9 GPM value plus between sections uh, riser 6 and 9 so if you check uh, previous value which will add that is uh, 1.04 which we have right in here plus riser 9 plus main 6 to 9 so if you see that riser 9 riser 9 GPM is how much you see here that is 0.92 so we have to write uh, riser 9.92 and the last one here is uh, main 6 to 9 if you check the main from 6 to 9 this one GPM is how much between 6 to 9 so main from riser 6 to 9 GPM is 0.11 so you have to write 0.11 here so you know all the GPMs now just add it total it will be 2.07 Again 2.07 is less than 3.5 GPM so we can use 3 by 4 inch pipe size so we have used 3 by 4 inch here. So I'm gonna use some other example here now. So let's say I'm going to calculate for this one. So you have to consider the previous one also. Previous one is 11.34 plus riser 3 and main 4 to 3. That is main is this one riser 3 and main 4 to 3 so if you see that riser 3 is in here and 4 is here so we have to check GPM for this riser 3 and all the GPM previous GPMs here plus riser 3 GPM to get the size for this pipe segment so what you have to do is GPM for riser 3 and GPM for uh, between riser 3 and 4 and the previous all GPMs so riser 3 is how much 1.14 and uh, between 4 to 3 is 1.08 so you can see that riser 3 value is 1.14 and 0 0.08 is for main between 4 and 3 and this is the previous uh, GPM which we have to add in here to get the size for the next pipe segment so if you see that total which we calculated here is 12.56 gpm so 12.56 gpm if you see here it's 12.4 gpm up till 12.4 gpm you can use one quarter inch but since this 12.56 is greater so we have to increase the size to one and a half inches so that's why we have used one and a half inch for this pipe segment so you can use one and a half inches up till 18.3 GPM you can use this size after that you have to increase the size again so one more last item I will tell you here same way you have to do for this one also 
so last item is riser 1 plus main 2 heater so if you see here so last item we have riser 1 and all the previous GPM which we have calculated to get the size for this pipe segment to get the size of this pipe segment you have to add all the GPM which we have calculated in here plus riser 1 GPM and this the main this main pipe GPM recirculation main pipe GPM so from section 1 to the heater so if you see that from uh, heater to the riser 1 how much is the GPM we calculated 0.15 and the riser 1 GPM how much we got in here that is 1.08 so 0.15 and 1.08 so if you see here 1.08 for riser 1 and 0.15 is for main main to the heater 1 and 14.6 is the previous GPM which we have calculated so adding all these values you will get 15.99 GPM total so 15.99 GPM is less than 18.3 and greater than 12.4 so that means we can use one and a half inch pipe size in here for that pipe segment so this is how you can do the hot water recirculation pipe sizing or you can design your hot water recirculation system so i hope you guys learned something from this video for more videos keep watching my channel and don't forget to subscribe thank you